So with the 2021-2022 NBA season coming up really soon, I decided now was as good of a time as any to start discussing every single team before the season starts. The way I'm going to be doing it is by discussing the worst teams down to the best teams in my own order like a prediction for the upcoming season. Right now, I'm on the number 19 spot and that's where I have the Memphis Grizzlies, meaning I think the Memphis Grizzlies will be the 19th best team this upcoming season. Before we get into the video, I ask you to drop a like on this video as it does help my channel grow. Subscribe to my channel if you want daily NBA content. Also, if you want to help me reach my goal of 1,500 subscribers. Also, drop a comment on this video as I do respond to all of my comments. And play that intro. But quickly before we get into the video, I gotta show you this really quickly. This is the new diversion water bottle. It's basically a water bottle where you can put stuff like your keys, wallet, and other kind of small items like in your water bottle that will make you lose it way less. And it will also just help you to not have your pockets full and things like that. Click the link in my bio if you're interested and into the video. To start the video off, I'm going to just be discussing how good I think the Memphis Grizzlies will be on the offensive side of the floor. And to be honest, I think Memphis will be an average to below average offensive team in the NBA. This is mainly due to the fact that last season they were dead in the middle in offense. And in my opinion, I think this offseason they either got worse on the offensive side of the floor as they traded their second leading scorer in Jonas Valanciunas who's one of the best post-up players in the NBA in return for Steven Adams who might be a better defender but is definitely a worse offensive player. Now I think there's a chance that could mess up their offense and make them worse. The only reason I don't say it will for sure make them worse is due to the fact that you could take the assumption that a lot of their young players will develop and improve on the offensive side of the floor as some of them will take leaps and make up for the loss of Valanciunas. I guess we'll have to see but regardless I don't think Memphis is going to be a top 10 offense and I don't think they're going to be a top 10 worst offense at the same time. To start off I'm going to talk about their future superstar in John Morant. I'm honestly expecting a huge season out of him because last season he didn't really improve significantly from his rookie year at least numbers wise. He had similar points, assists and efficiency and that led to a lot of people calling him overrated. I didn't really think he was overrated but I thought people were overhyping him a little bit but then he showed in the play tournament and in the playoffs why he deserved all the hype like because in the two playing games he played he played absolutely amazing especially in that Warriors game where he went head to head with Steph Curry then in the postseason he averaged over 30 points against one of the best defenses of the last five years so after seeing Ja end the season on such a high note I'm honestly expecting them to to break out this season and become a legit all-star around the NBA. I think his three-point shot will improve significantly and I think he'll just be a way more aggressive player and he won't be passing as much. And I think he's going to average somewhere around 22 points, eight assists, shooting like 47% from the field. And depending on how good Memphis is, I definitely could see John making the all-star team. Definitely expecting good things out of John Morant next season. Next, we got to talk about Jaron Jackson Jr., who is a guy who I think think will have a really good season because previously like before his injury he was looking like he was on pace to be one of the best defenders in the NBA and just be a future all-star level player but like that injury really slowed him down because he barely played last season I think he played less than 15 games and a lot of the hype around his name has definitely slowed down but nonetheless I still think he's a guy who has all-star potential and defensive player of the year potential he just needs to stay healthy and if he can stay healthy I definitely think he'll really help this team out I don't think it's crazy to think that he could be a guy who averages 20 points and 8 rebounds while playing amazing defense I just hope he can stay healthy that's my biggest concern with him right now I know he can be a really good player Next, I want to talk about Dylan Brooks, who really showed up at the end of last season as he had great games in the playing tournament, and he just played some really good defense on some NBA stars, and in the playoffs, he had some big games as well. To be honest, I'm not expecting him to take a big leap. I think he'll stay at around the same level of a player that he was last season, but at the same time, he is only 25 years old, so it's not crazy to think that he could improve, maybe be a 20-point scorer, but 
nonetheless as he stands right now he's a guy who could give you 16 to 18 points while being one of the better perimeter defenders in the nba i honestly didn't realize he was that good on the perimeter until i saw him in the play-in tournament because he absolutely locked down the martyr rosen then he played as good of defense as you can against steph curry no one can guard steph curry but he did a pretty good job if you ask me i definitely just really like dylan brooks and his effort next i want to talk about their newly acquired center in steven adams to be honest i don't really think he is better than jonas valanciunas and i actually think it's a downgrade because valanciunas was a way better finisher and he can actually create his own shot in the post and attack mismatches at an elite level whereas adams cannot do that really he also could space the floor way better than adams because he has a legit mid-range shot and sometimes he can even shoot threes obviously he's not gonna like be standing at the three-point line but at least sometimes he could like knock down one occasionally whereas adams is like a non-threat at all and Adams isn't even a top 10 center defender in the NBA but I could still see the argument of you thinking the Grizzlies will be better with him since his defense is better than Jonas Valanciunas's but I just think Jonas Valanciunas's on the offensive side of the floor will be very missed and his ability to not clog the paint up as much he still clogged the paint up don't get it twisted but not as much as Adams will and now to talk about like some of the smaller players on this team first i ought to talk about kyle anderson one of the best role players in the nba even though he's really slow he's still a really good offensive player with his ability to just do everything as he can rebound finish and even space the floor i think he'll just continue to be a really good role player next i want to talk about brandon clark who in his rookie year was one of the most impactful and just best rookies but in his second year he kind of fell off and he even like was out of the rotation to end the season I don't really know why because I'm not a Grizzlies fan. If you guys could let me know, that would be kind of cool. But I still think he's a guy who could be an amazing backup center or maybe even a starting center. I just hope he can have a back -back, bounce back season because what he was doing in his rookie year was really impressive. Desmond Bain's a pretty good shooter. I like him. Xavier Tillman's a pretty solid center. I think he'll do great as a backup. And Tyus Jones is a decent backup point guard. He was actually one of the better backup point guards in the league yesterday last season underratedly so overall i think memphis is a pretty decent offensive team but i don't think they're an elite offensive team because they don't have that guy who's gonna average like 25 points i like john morant but i don't think he's that type of player because he's a guy who likes to pass a lot and he just i don't think he's gonna average 25 points next for the grizzlies i want to discuss them on the defensive side of the floor to be honest i definitely think memphis improved on the defensive side of the floor this season because they got rid of Jonas valanciunas was arguably their weakest defender in the starting lineup maybe on the old team due to the fact that he would constantly get abused in pick and roll situations and he could not guard the perimeter to save his life and in return they got a guy who's better on defense i'm not saying stephen adams is bam out of bio a guy who's going to be switching on the perimeter locking up guards but he's just simply a better overall defender as a rim protector and he's just a smarter defender and he's better in pick and roll situations so they definitely improves like defensively at the center position which is the most important position on defense they're also going to be hopefully getting a full season of jaron jackson jr who as i said is a guy who i think can be one of the best defenders in the nba so i definitely think he's going to have a huge impact on this team and just overall the grizzlies were ranked as an average defense last year and i think they will improve and rank somewhere around the 10th at best and 13th at worst at the defensive spot they have guys like dylan brooks who's a very good perimeter defender and i think he's the second best defender on the team jaron jackson jr is a guy who i think can be one of the best defenders in the league they have steven adams who is an above average defensive center they have kyle anderson who although he's pretty slow he's actually surprisingly a really good defender just because of how smart he is and like his especially when he comes to stealing the ball and brandon clark is a pretty good defender at least he was in his rookie season and i just hope he could go back to that this is just a roster that i think is going to succeed on the defensive side of the floor also when you factor in their coach is very smart and he makes great defensive schemes I definitely think this is going to be a really good team on defense and i think that's going to be a reason they take that step forward to answer the question of why i ranked the memphis grizzlies number 19 on my list 
It's due to the fact that although I think Memphis is a really good team and they are underrated, I simply don't think they're as talented as the other teams are in the Western Conference. Because right now on their roster, they don't even have a guy who I think is a top 30 player in the NBA. I like John Morant, but he's probably not top 30 in the NBA. Some people would argue top 40. I don't know about that. But I think that's going to be the biggest problem with this team until John Morant takes that super leap to be like a top 20 player in the NBA, which I think he will do kind of soon, but I don't think it will be next season. I also just think Memphis needs a second and consistent score to go alongside John Morant because Jaron Jackson is kind of inconsistent. You don't know what you're going to get out of him and he deals with injuries. Dylan Brooks is way too inefficient to be your second option. And I also just don't think this team is going to be elite at either side of the ball, right? definitely could see them making the playoffs and at worst they definitely will be a playing team memphis could definitely have one of those seasons where they surprise everyone i'm just kind of wary of their health like their health problems anyways guys that's it for the video let me know where you think memphis should rank on my list drop a like on this video to help my channel grow subscribe to my channel if you want daily nba content also if you want to help me reach my goal of 1500 subscribers also drop a comment on this video as i do respond to all of my comments and i'm out